This is one of the most crucial, critical, and neglected aspects of our theology. And we neglect it for a number of reasons, not least of which is people love Jesus as long as we're not too clear about who he is. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you want evidence of that, Christmas is the ultimate evidence of that. Amen. I'm not here to be a Scrooge or anything like that. God bless you. I know, you know, the people who love Christmas, Christmas favorite time of the year and, and, and everything else. And that, that's great. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for all of that. But here's what's interesting. I want you to imagine something. Imagine, you know, in a few months, pastors standing up in their pulpits and saying, listen, at Easter, Jesus is the reason for the season. Pastors don't say that at Easter. Why? Because unlike Christmas, nobody's tempted to make anything else the reason for the season. Or imagine a pastor around Easter time saying, hey, make sure we keep Christ in Easter. It's, it's laughable to think that a pastor would say that, but how often do we hear, make sure to keep Christ in Christmas? Why? Because everybody loves Christmas. Not everybody. Everybody. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beyond everybody. Amen? You don't believe me? Listen to this. It's from the Guinness Book of World Records. The most expensive Christmas tree decorated. 16th December 2010. The most expensive dressed Christmas tree was valued at $11,026,900 and was erected and displayed by the Emirates Palace in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates from December 16th to December 29th, 2010. That's right. That's right. We have so diluted Christmas that a Muslim country has the Guinness world record for the most expensive Christmas tree ever in the world. Erected in the middle of a mall in a country where you bet not convert to Christianity. Why? Because everybody loves Jesus as long as you don't define who he is. As long as you don't get into the nitty gritty of what it means for Jesus to be the son of God. Listen, if Jesus is just a good man and a good teacher, even a good prophet, he is completely acceptable. Mormons and Muslims alike love Jesus. Hindus and Buddhists are very happy with Jesus. As long as he's just a teacher, who offers sage wisdom, then Jesus is fine. But the minute you step across that line and argue that Jesus is more than prophet, more than teacher, that he is actually God incarnate, God with us. Now, all of a sudden, those who were more than willing to gather with you scatter. Because everybody loves Jesus. As long as you don't define him. Welcome back to Narrow Path Doctrine. My name is Jim. This time around, I want to take a look at, well, a big question. Is Jesus God? 
Now, if you look on YouTube, do a search for Is Jesus God? You'll see a lot of uh, YouTube channels out there that basically say that uh, Jesus is not God. And these are so-called Christians. These are professing Christians who say that, uh, well, Jesus never claimed to be God in the Word of God. There's proof that he's not God. And, well, I'm here to tell you that that is really, really wrong. And, in fact, Jesus did claim to be God in the Word of God. And we need to... Uh, understand that if we don't believe that Jesus is God, then we don't even know who Jesus truly is, and how can we be in Christ and be a saved Christian if we don't even know who God is? That's what doctrine is for. That's why this channel is here, and that's why I release these, these videos, because there are a lot of professing Christians who don't know doctrine. They don't know anything about, you know, and they'll say, well, I, I don't really like doctrine or whatever, but so I'll say, well, what's the gospel? And they'll start to tell me the gospel, and I'll say, you're doing doctrine. So, you know, we need to know what's what. But you can't possibly be a saved Christian if you don't know who God is. That, that's just the way it is. And if you don't know that Jesus actually is God, and Jesus claimed to be God, then you don't know Jesus, and you are not in Christ. So if you were sitting at your computer right now, on your phone, your iPad, whatever, and you're saying, no, Jesus is not God. I want you to listen to this. I want you to, to take to heart what I'm going to say in this video and the verses I will provide. And there'll be a few, obviously, that you've heard before, but maybe a couple that you haven't heard before. So stick around, it, especially at the very end. I have one verse that I think really, really proves it, okay? Now, I think at the end of the day, a lot of people who don't think that Jesus is God, well, God simply has not revealed it to them. That's just, at the end of the day, that's really what it is. Because when you look at the book of Matthew and chapter 16, Jesus is asking his disciples, well, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter, and Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I think the same thing has to happen whenever it comes to people realizing just who Christ is, realizing that he is God. It has to be revealed to them. So if it hasn't yet, maybe, just maybe, some of these verses, some of these things said in this video today will reveal that to you. The Holy Spirit will use this and reveal it. So please stick around for the entire video, okay? It's not that long. Isaiah 7 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel means God with us, indicating the deity of the promised Messiah. John 1 1. Everyone's heard this verse, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Couldn't get any more clear than that. John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word, identified as Jesus Christ, existed from the beginning, was with God, and was God himself incarnate. Colossians 2, 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus embodies the fullness of God's nature, bodily affirming his deity. Some of Jesus' own claims in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Jesus asserts his unity with the Father, indicating equality in nature here. In John 8, 58, this is the big one. This is where Jesus basically says, I am God, without saying, I am God. That's not how God does things. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus uses the divine title, I am, identifying himself with the God who revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 3.14. Same, same God, same God. Worship and recognition of Jesus. We see that uh, Thomas's confession in John 20, 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Now, did Jesus rebuke Thomas? You know how the angels rebuke people for worshiping them? No, no, worship God alone. Well, Jesus did not rebuke Thomas when he said that. Thomas acknowledges Jesus as both Lord and God, affirming his deity. 
Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, and here's that name, it's not Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every created being will ultimately acknowledge Jesus' lordship, which implies his divine nature. Whether you believe he's God or not, you will. You will acknowledge his lordship. The Bible consistently presents Jesus Christ as God incarnate, the second person of the Trinity. Also, he possesses attributes of God. Attributes that only God has, omniscience. In John 16, 30, Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. The disciples acknowledged Jesus' omniscience, a trait belonging to God alone. Omnipotence, in Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus declares that he has all power, which is an attribute of God. His role in creation, Colossians 1, 16 and 17, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. These verses affirm that Jesus is the creator of all things, a role that belongs to, you guessed it, God. Jesus is equality with God. In Philippians 2, 5 to 6, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Paul states that Jesus, being in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be obtained, implying that he is indeed equal with God. And Jesus forgives sins. Mark 2, 5-7, through 7, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man Thus speak blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but God only? Here Jesus forgives sins, something that the scribes correctly understood belongs to God alone. Only times the scribes were actually right. Uh, he has divine titles. Revelation 1.8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is referred to as the Alpha and Omega, and the Almighty titles that denote his uh, divine nature. We also have some additional verses here that I want you to make note of. If somebody comes to you and says, Jesus is not God, write these verses down. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9.6, for unto us a child is born, unto us... A son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is a big one, uh, one that I think a lot of people really miss. It's in the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament, Zechariah 12.10. Now, this is God speaking here. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace, of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So they shall look upon me, God speaking, whom they have pierced. Who did they pierce? They pierced Jesus Christ. Zechariah 12.10. Make note of that one. The Bible is unequivocal in its testimony that Jesus Christ is God. From the opening verses of John's Gospel, through the apostolic teachings, to the divine attributes and roles, Ascribed to him, Jesus is shown to be fully divine. These people that deny that Jesus is indeed God are ignoring the very word of God. All of these verses, it's all throughout the word. The Bible is about Jesus Christ. He is eternal, omniscient, 
omnipotent, the creator, equal with God, the forgiver of sins, and deserving of our worship. Jesus is our Savior and our God. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share it with others, especially those who say that Jesus is not God. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and click the notification bell to get updates when new videos like this one come out. So until next time, remember, true doctrine fuels a living, breathing faith. God bless. John is saying if you reject the only Christ, the only Son of God, the only Savior, you're doomed. You don't know God at all. You're denying God when you deny His Son. Anyone who does that is the Antichrist. Chapter 3, he says it again down in verse 23, this is the commandment that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the commandment from God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's His commandment. If you keep that commandment, you abide in Him and He in you, verse 24. Look at chapter 4 across the page. Don't believe every spirit, every religion, every supposed supernatural revelation, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God. How do you know when something is from God and isn't a part of the many false prophets and prophecies that have gone out into the world? Here's how you know. By this you know the Spirit of God is the source. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist of which you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. Reject Christ, and you are Antichrist and anti-God. Anyone who says that Christ is not the Son of God, not God in human flesh, is Antichrist does not know God.